Take a stand, make a scene, it's reading time with the queens. I know you've been hoping for reading time with the queens. The library's open for reading time with the queens. There's lots to know about the world today, so open a book, let's make our way. There's crafts to be making at reading time with the queens. There's songs to be singing at reading time with the queens. Today we'll learn that we each are a star. We'll spread kindness wherever we are. It's so much fun, but it's not a dream. It's reading time with the queens. Welcome to an extra special edition of Reading Time with the Queens. Hi, it's me, Miss Kelly. I'm going to be your host for today and I am very excited. Can you guess why? It's Pride Month, yay! And we are going to be celebrating with a very special Pride Apalooza! Um, yes. Uh, Pride is a very important time for queer people because it gives us time to remember the progress that we've made towards creating a more loving and accepting world. But it also reminds us of all the way that we still have to go as a society, as a community, as a people. Um, I'm very excited to be with you today. Usually we do all this type of celebrating in a festival with lots of people around, but because of the pandemic, we've had to do some more digital options, which is okay with me because even though we're doing it online, we still get to be together, which reminds me, say hey everybody. Hi. Hi everybody. Hi everyone. Hi. Hey everyone. Wonderful! Well, I encourage all of you to engage in our Pride of Palooza today by leaving a comment below, say something nice about my nice hat. Do you like my hat? There's a ribbon on it. Um, say something, like if you have a question, you can comment that below. I will be watching those when this goes up at first, and I'll be commenting back and we'll all have a fun time together. But first, before we start, with any of our usual things like reading, we are going to be hearing from Mr. Zay, who is going to be teaching us some signs that we can use not only during our stories today, but also throughout the rest of Pride. Say, hey, Mr. Zay. Hi, thank you, Miss Callie. Hi, everyone. I'm, ha I'm glad we're come together this month. We're celebrating Pride. I really enjoy that. So I decided on three different signs that you can learn and use with all the reading that we're doing through the month. So the first sign, pride. Up, up. Thumb up, pride, pride. Celebrate. So just kind of crook your fingers a little bit and circle them around your head. Celebrate. Pride is a huge celebration, so I figured that'd be appropriate. So the third one is love. And some of you already know the sign that we've shown before with the reading, but I feel like it's an appropriate match here. So love, I'm gonna put your hands, fists, and then put them together across them over your chest. There's another word that works with, I love you. And one easy way to sign that is, I love you, just like this. If you really love somebody, just feel free to show it to them. I love you. I love you. So I'm really excited for the three books that we're reading. But before we start, I want to talk about why pride is important to me. I feel like pride needs to be important for the LGBTQ community to come together and coordinate and unite together. Normally, every day, we don't have that community support. We don't have that bond together. So pride celebrations uh, that we set up, we have a time to celebrate together. So now, the three signs, I'm going to repeat them. So please sign them with me, guys. Pride. Celebrate. 
love or I love you. So now with that, we're going to start off with the first story of the day. Mr. Rowan is going to read you that one. Hi, Mr. Rowan. Hi. Thanks, Mr. Zay. Hi, everyone. It's me, Mr. Rowan, and I am here today to share with you this book, This Day in June, by Gail E. Pittman and illustrated by Christina Litton. So this is a book that talks about what a pride parade is normally like. It's not going to be like that this year since we're all staying home. But that's the fun thing about books is that they get to take us to places and times that we don't normally get to get to or things that we are missing out on for uh, the safety of others. But I'd like to share with you this day in June. This day in June, Parade starts soon. Rainbow arches, joyful marches. We see all the people cheering on the parade from their houses. That's a lot more like what we're gonna be doing this year. Motors roaring, spirits soaring. Voices chanting, doggies panting. That is one of my favorite things about Pride is getting pet all the dogs. You need to ask first, dog manners are important. Clad in leather, perfect weather. Artists painting, sisters sainting. Banners swaying, children playing. I like this person here on roller skates, I'm a big fan. Dancers jumping, music pumping. I like this one's just as a mermaid, we've got some sailors. Sidewalk shaking. Tommy's aching. I guess everyone ate a little much too much candy at the parade. Painted ladies, crying babies. And some of the kids got kind of overwhelmed. It happens. A lot of noises, a lot of people. Sometimes you just get tired at parades. Fancy dresses, flowing dresses. I like this person dressed like a peacock. Reminds me of a cat, or call it a peacock. Maybe I'll bring her to Pride next year. Loving kisses, so delicious. All invited, all excited. This day in June, we are all united. So that's one of my favorite books about Pride because it really encapsulates the things that are important about Pride to me, where my dad was a bisexual person and I am trans and my children have two moms and two dads and we get to understand that the LGBTQ community means that our family is not just as big as our, our nuclear family and I have a lot of people who are my family because we are uh, gay together and pride really gets uh, to be a time to celebrate that. All right, thanks for joining me. All right, Miss Barb, can you hear me? Are you good? I'm here, Mr. Rowan. Hello, everyone. It's me, Miss Barb. Welcome to Craft Corner. And today we are going to make this cute little colorful rainbow mobile. So let me show you what you're going to need. We have our construction paper in the colors of the rainbow. You're going to need a ruler, a pencil or a pen, scissors or a paper cutter, a stapler, some glue, some ribbon or some string, and some clothespins. All right, so the first step we do is we got to cut our strips of paper. You're going to need one strip, excuse me, two strips of each color for the rainbow that has the, the mobile that has the two, two separate hearts. And to keep things even, I just use the width of my ruler. And let me show you, we just get our, where did my pen go? Here we go. Get our uh, ruler. 
make a trace, a nice straight line. And I like to use the paper cutter because I can get a cleaner cut line. So let me just line it up. Zip. Okay, so this is what we need. And I went ahead and got all the pieces cut ready to go. So here, step two is line up your papers, kind of in a stair step style. And where we're making the rainbow, we just put them in order of the rainbow colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. And then the next, we wanna take the bottom, kind of flip it like this, and the red is the outside of the craft. So we want to cut everything below the red off. So we cut that off. All right. Now, take the purple, which is the inside of the, of the heart shape, and put end to end. And then add the next one, end to end. So it's kind of like in reverse order from this step. Keep them tightly matched together. And finally the red, which is the outside. Here then, you just take a staple. Oops. Okay. Now, where this one had the two hearts on it, you can make them exactly the same, or you can reverse the colors and put the red, like here I've got the red on the inside, the purple on the outside. Just whatever combination, if you don't want rainbow colors, just do whatever colors. All right, so I pre-made the second half, and here's where your glue, comes in. I'm just using a little craft stick to get the glue. You want to be sure to glue on the inside where the prongs are so you keep the, the sharp edges on the inside. Add your glue about halfway up and do that on both sides. Okay, the prong sides in. Okay, oops, I guess you probably should cut your ribbon before you get to this step. Let's set those down and grab our ribbon. And just kind of eyeball how long you think you might want the string. Okay. Keep some up loose from the top so you can hang it if you'd like. And set the string in there. And take the other half. Okay, so need some help in keeping them stuck together. So here's your clothespins. And we're just going to use two and clip them together, set them aside, and let them dry. Basically that's it. When, when those are dry, take the clothespins out and you have yourself and you have yourself. Yes. Miss Barb is crazy today. You have yourself your little mobile. <clears throat> I just really enjoy these colors. They're so beautiful. The rainbow colors. Pride colors. As an ally to the queer community, I love everyone. Pride is about offering love, kindness, and acceptance to everyone that I meet. Now I think we're finished up here in Craft Corner. Thank you for joining me today. I do believe I see Mr. Aaron over there ready to go with another story. Thanks, Miss Barb. That was a wonderful craft. Hi, everybody. I am going to read a story to you today, and it is about a little boy that is hiding a secret from everybody, and it is called Perfectly Norman. 
instead of normal. So we'll just see what he's hiding in, what he does with it, okay? So this is written by Tom Percival. Norman had always been normal, perfectly normal, until one day. Look at that. Just chilling out with some friends. He's playing fetch with his dog. So just normal. Normal everyday things. Uh-oh. He grew a pair of wings. <gasps> Look at that. I don't think that's normal. But it is Norman. Look at that. He's got some beautiful wings. <gasps> What's going to happen? One day he just grew some wings. Norman had imagined growing taller or growing a beard like his dad. But he had never imagined growing a pair of wings. So look, see, his dream is getting taller, trying to get a beard. But look, he's got his wings. Still. They were here now, so he decided to test them out right away. And he's flying. Look at that. Soon, Norman was swooping around, gen 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 generally having the most fun ever. He's flying around, he's got some birds over here. But then, Norman, he had to go in for dinner. And you see, Norman had always been so normal, he didn't know how his parents would feel about his extraordinary wings. As he went in, Norman covered himself with a great big coat. See, dinner time, he's thinking about, ooh, I should probably go in home. He's got a great big coat over here, he's gonna cover himself. Probably going to keep those wings a secret. His parents didn't notice the wings, but they did think it was odd to be wearing a coat indoors. Okay. That time was problematic. So was bedtime. The coat was hot and uncomfortable, but Norman had decided that no one should ever see his wings. Ever. See? Wearing his jacket at dinner. Bath time with a coat? I've never taken a bath time with a coat. And then look, all, all chilling in bed, looking at a feather, it looks like. Not sure what's gonna happen next. The next day, Norman went to the park, but he was far too hot to play any of his favorite games. And so it went on. There, he's at the park. It doesn't look like he's having much fun though. Got a big coat on. All of his friends are playing games over there. He's just chilling with the dog. Even the dog wants to play fetch. Long car journeys were unbearable. The swimming pool was dreadful. And there was nothing compared to his friend's birthday party. There you go. Looks like he's in the car, still wearing that jacket. Not very comfortable. Definitely not gonna go swimming with that jacket on. And then look, all of his friends at a birthday party just chilling. And he's uh has a plate of snacks with a dog. Hmm. The only time that Norman could feel normal now was when it rained. Look at that. Everyone's got umbrellas, his mom and dad have an umbrella, and he's got his jacket. Feels good now, huh? Okay, Let's see what happens next, because it's not gonna rain all the time. One day, a boy tried to pull his coat off, and Norman had to run away, hot-faced, angry, and sad. He wished he'd never grown those stupid wings. Look at that, look at that bully. Trying to get his jacket off. He probably likes the jacket. And he just ran away. Remove yourself from a situation. If you don't like something that's happening, go away. Take yourself out of it. Smart. He didn't fight. He just left. Good. And he's sad. 
wishing he didn't have his wings. No. Then he saw some birds high up in the sky and remembered the joy of his first flight. It occurred to Norman that it was the coat that was making him miserable, not the wings. Hmm. Look at that. Birds up there, flying around. Norman's looking up like, hmm, I remember when I was up there. That was fun. Maybe it is the jacket. Hmm. What's gonna happen next? Why don't you take that scruffy old thing off? Suggested his mom and dad. Norman looked at them, at them hesitantly. His parents smiled and nodded. Norman smiled back. Then he threw off the coat and let his wonderful wings fan out. Ooh, okay. Look, his mom and dad are encouraging him, being a supportive. Let's see what's under there. Yeah, they're reassuring him. It's okay, no matter what happens. And boom, he has thrown off his coat and he's got his wings again, right? Showing them off for everybody. All right. Even the dog's happy. Okay. Let's see what happens. Norman leapt into the air. Finally, he was free of the coat. All right, good. He noticed a few other children wearing thick, heavy coats of their own. They looked up at Norman and around at each other nervously. There was a moment's pause, and then, what's gonna happen? Look, Norman's flying, being himself, enjoying his beautiful wings. There's friends looking up at him. Kinda got some things going on here, some jackets and things. One guy's got a hoodie. Let's see what happens next. <gasps> Whoosh! The sky is filled with flying people. Norman had never felt so happy. Well, look at that. He, Norman wasn't the only one hiding anything under his coat. Everyone else had some wings too. They're expressing themselves. Look, they've got some birds that are flying around. All of his friends look really happy. Whoosh. All right. He realized that there was no such thing as perfectly normal, but he was perfectly Norman, which was just as it should be. Look at that. The dog's happy. They can play fetch. Just a whole different way to do it, huh? So that's really nice. Norman figured out that with his, his wings, he has to share it with others instead of covering up who he is. That's really nice. That's really special. So... I like this for a number of reasons. One, I like wings. I would love to have some wings of my own. Two, he finally was able to express himself and everyone around him was really accepting and maybe he encouraged others to express themselves as well. So hopefully you get a little, little uh, value from Forever Norman. And remember that nobody is perfectly normal, but can all be perfectly yourselves. So pride is important to me for a lot of reasons. Um, one reason is because it allows me to celebrate the diversity of the people around us. Everybody is different. Everybody has their own story or something that they want to share that they don't always feel like they can. And Pride is a time where we celebrate the differences between ourselves and our friends, and maybe even complete strangers that have something that can bring value to our lives. So when I can express something that means a lot to me and share it with others, it encourages others to share it with, share their special gift with somebody else and so on and so forth. Um, that's, that's one of the big reasons. Another reason is, Sometimes I don't get out and see a lot of people uh, uh, very often, so uh, Pride is a good time to go out and socialize and meet new people or get in touch with old friends and, and spend some time together. So another thing about Pride that I really like, Pride Month, 
and um, the Pride Festival is all sorts of music, different types of music, different songs that are sung, and I think that Miss Dinah has a song that she wants to share with all of us. So I'm going to let her sing to you, okay? Why, yes, Mr. Aaron, you're right. Hi, I'm Miss Dinah, and I have a great song to sing for you today. This song is so wonderful because it talks about us being our true selves and that the people in our lives will love us even more when we show them our true colors. It's True Colors by Cindy Lauper. Feel free to sing along with me if you know it. It's such a wonderful song and thank you for those of you that did sing along with me. Um, pride is important to me because it is a time for people to be celebrated for who they are, for being courageous and wonderful and it gives them a space and it gives other people that aren't as, aren't as knowledgeable about people that celebrate pride to be a part of the celebration and to learn and hopefully in that process to learn to love as well the people around them and to learn themselves a little bit more. Well, I know that we have one more story for the show. So Mr. Buster, are you there? Yes, Miss Dinah, I'm here. Hi everyone, I'm Buster the bookkeeper and I have a collection of books here, but I can't seem to find the last book that I'm here to read for you today, so let me look in one other spot. Ha! Here it is. When Aiden Became a Brother by Kyle Lukoff and illustrated by Kehlani Juanita. This is going to be our final book for the day. I'm super excited to read this with you all. When Aiden was born, everyone thought he was a girl. His parents gave him a pretty name, his room looked like a girl's room, and he wore clothes that other girls liked wearing. Here's Aiden here, and these are Aiden's parents over here. And Aiden doesn't look like he's having such a good day right now. 
Hopefully that will change. Let's find out. But as Aiden got bigger, he hated the sound of his name. He felt like his room belonged to someone else, and he always ripped or stained his clothes accidentally on purpose. There's Aiden. Getting all muddy. Everyone thought he was just a different kind of girl. Some girls had rooms full of science experiments and bug collections. Lots of girls didn't wear dresses. Here's some of Aiden's friends. Bug collections, science experiments. But Aiden didn't feel like any kind of girl. He was really another kind of boy. It was hard to tell his parents what he knew about himself, but it was even harder not to. It took everyone some time to adjust, and they learned a lot from other families with transgender kids like him. So here's Aiden, cutting his hair, feeling a little bit more confident as you can see, and here's some other families that they're hanging out with. Aiden explored different ways of being a boy. He tried out lots of names until one stuck. Then he changed his room into a place where he belonged. He also took much better care of his new clothes. He's got a really cool tent bed. As you all can see, I like this little seat right here. I need this in my living room. And then here's Aiden with his new clothes, his new haircut, looking a lot more happier, a lot more confident. Then one day, Mom and Dad had something to tell him. I'm going to have a baby, Mom announced. A baby? Aiden said. Does that mean I get to be a big brother? Of course, said Dad, ruffling his hair. Aiden thought that being a big brother was an important job for a boy like him. He wanted to make sure this baby would feel understood right away. Here's Mom and Dad telling Aiden about the new baby and becoming a big brother. The baby needed clothes, so Aiden and his mom went shopping. There were so many choices. Would the baby like seahorses or penguins better? Are you having a boy or a girl? asked a lady. Aiden didn't like that. People asked if he was a boy or a girl, and he hoped the baby couldn't hear yet. He was glad when mom just smiled and said, I'm having a baby. So here's uh, Aiden and his mom shopping for clothes. And then that's when um, they're getting questioned by strangers about if the baby is a boy or a girl. The baby's room needed to be painted, so Aiden and his dad went to the hardware store. Dad chose a gallon of sky blue paint, and Aiden added a puffy cloud white. Good choices. Are you excited for your new brother or sister? Asked the paint guy. I'm excited to be a big brother, Aiden said. The paint guy looked confused. Aiden could tell that he wanted to ask a different question, and he was glad to have his dad there. So there's the Aiden and his dad walking to the paint shop together to the hardware store to get paint. And then here is the hardware guy. And here's Aiden and his dad. And Aiden's looking a little hurt. But that's all about ready to change with this awesome job they're doing. The big rollers were fun to paint with. The room feels just like being outside, Aiden explained. He had always felt trapped in his, his bedroom before. They fixed it, but his new sibling wouldn't have to feel that way. You're right, said Dad. Let's make some shapes in the clouds. So there's them painting the room. What shapes do you guys see in here? I see a dolphin. Maybe a cat or a crab. There's some pretty cool ideas. What do you guys see? Maybe a turtle? You see the turtle? Every baby needs a name, Aiden. <clears throat> Aiden loved getting to choose his own, but he remembered that it had been hard for his parents to let go of the name they had given him. He looked for names that could fit this new person, no matter who they grew up to be. There's lots of baby's books and a notepad with ideas for the new name for the baby. 
That's a lot to go through. It's a tough job. Babies need someone to read to them. So Aiden practiced. And practiced. And practiced. So here's Aiden practicing here, outside, and even in the bathtub. Lots of hard work learning how to read to someone. Dad wanted to teach Aiden how to change diapers. Uh, maybe later, said Aiden. He decided that picking flowers for his mom was more important. <laughs> Me too. That's never any fun learning how to change diapers. So there's all the pretty flowers that Aiden's getting for his mom. They make her feel very special. And even the cat is along the way enjoying the fun. Two weeks before the baby's due date, Aiden started to worry. Maybe he should have picked different clothes. The blue walls might be too bright. He wished he could ask the baby which name they liked best. So here's Aiden in his bed, really worried that he had made all the right choices for the new baby. Mom came to tuck him in. Are you feeling okay, sweetie? She asked. Aiden put his hands over where he thought the baby's ears would be. Do you think the baby will be happy with everything? He whispered, I don't want them to feel like I did, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't want them to feel like I did when I was little, but what if I get everything wrong? What if I don't know how to be a good big brother? I don't think there's any way to know. And here's Aiden, asking his mom if he's doing all the right things. He's going to be a good big brother. It's a lot to worry about, for sure. Mom hugged him tight. When you were born, we didn't know we were going to <clears throat> we didn't know you were going to be our son. We made mistakes, but you helped us fix them. And you taught us how important it is to love someone for exactly who they are. This baby is so lucky to have you, and so are we. There's Aiden's mom giving him a very good pep talk. I love that pep talk. And they're so happy. The next morning, Aiden found the boxes of his old baby pictures. He looked so different back then. It hadn't been easy, but he liked the boy he was growing into. Maybe everything wouldn't be perfect for this baby. Maybe he would have to fix mistakes he didn't know he was making. And maybe that was okay. So here's Aiden going through his old baby stuff. And then here's an old photo that he's looking at. There you go. But it will get Aiden knew how to love someone, and this was the most important part of being a brother. There's like a baby party. Everyone's excited. We got some people, some friends over here hanging out with the dog. And then pictures and a party going on. Everyone's having a good time. And then look, it's the new baby. It's a new baby that Aiden is holding. You guys see? And that's the end of the story. I really love this book. The reason why I love this book is that it talks about how much lo unconditional love this family had for Aiden and how much love that Aiden had for his new sibling and how excited he was to become a big brother. That can be the most exciting part of becoming a sibling. Um, and it was just well, it's near and dear to my heart. During this month, we're doing for Pride... I read this book. And why is Pride important to me is a big question I get all the time. Pride's important to me because I get to learn about the history of the LGBTQ plus people, the struggles that they've come through that I haven't, that I had no experience in. And then I get to be a part of that history in for future generations to learn about all the things that have been going on in the world that I've been a part of. And I think that's really cool. And my friends and I get to celebrate who we are authentically and openly. And another thing that this book reminds me of is a song that Callie G loves to sing. And so, you 
hear that? Do you hear that? I think that's Callie singing. When your heart has butterflies inside it, then your heart is full of love. When your heart feels just like overflowing, then your heart is full of love. Love is fragile as your tears. Love is stronger than your fears. When your heart can sing another's gladness, then your heart is full of love. When your heart can cry another sadness, then your heart is full of love. Love is fragile as your tears. Love is stronger than your fears. When your heart beats for a special someone, then your heart is full of love. When your heart has room for everybody, then your heart is full of love. difficult to remember that even though we are apart from the ones that we love, it doesn't mean that they love us any less. That's why I like to celebrate pride every year. Seeing everybody joining together reminds me that deep down, all of us, every one of us, all of our hearts are full of love. And just like that, I'm back in the comfort of my own living room. <laughs> Thank you to everyone for attending our Pride of Palooza today. Let's give a big round of applause to our wonderful cast. Everybody, yay! See you later, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Remember, Pride is all month long. That means you have all month long to remember the importance of being yourself and you have all month long to remember that it's important to love others. I know that one day we will be able to be back together again in one spot, but at least right now I'm glad that we're able to be together alone. I love you all. Make sure you're following up on Reading Time by following our schedule on Facebook and Instagram. And um, yes, I will be putting a little video here that shows you exactly what we'll be doing all the rest of the year, one way or another. <laughs>